All right, welcome everyone to Ask Bucky Unfiltered. My name is Janan and I'm a special projects intern at Campus and Visitor Relations or CAVR. Today on our webcast, I'm really excited to have FH King with us, um, a student org on campus. So I'm going to have them introduce themselves. Hi everyone, my name is Tyler. I am the current administration administrative director at FH King. Um, I am a CNE Soch major. Hi everyone, I'm Maggie. I'm currently the programming director at FH King and I study environmental science in Spanish. Um, hi, I'm Sophia. I am the educational director at FH King and I study CNE Soch as well and um, food systems and gender and women's studies. Awesome. Before we move on, can you tell us what CNE Soch is? Like, what is that major? Yeah. Well, it stands for Community and Environmental Sociology. Okay. And it's, um, it's housed in CALS, so it's not housed in the same college that regular sociology is. It's hard to explain. Tyler, yeah. do you know how to explain it? <laughs> yeah, that's um, a good question. I feel like every time I ever asked or someone asked me what my major is, they're like, okay, what is that? <laughs> and I'm just like, yeah, that's a good question. Um, I don't know. I think of it more as like, sociology with like a focus because sociology can mean like the study of like basically anything whereas like CNE social is just a little bit more focused on like small scale community outcomes versus like large scale yeah and I think it's also grounded a little bit more in like concrete structures so you're not studying like structures of how the individual acts in society it's like I'm studying how like people interact with like climate refugees at the same time as like this environmental thing is happening. Like it's more, I think the structures are a little bit more concrete. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Thanks for sharing. Um, I know I didn't know about that major until Tyler shared with me maybe a year or so ago, but good to know for students like looking into the environmental sociology side of things. Um, so for FH King, can you all tell us a little bit about what that student organization does and how is your organization a little bit different than others on campus? Yeah, so we are FH King, Students for Sustainable Agriculture. Um, and there are definitely a lot of groups on campus that have food insecurity or food culture as their focus. However, we are the only student run farm on campus and so for those who don't know what FH King is, um, we run about a one acre farm in Eagle Heights Community Gardens. And it's um, all completely run by students. We have a board of nine directors, um, two of which are farm directors who run and our farm and do an amazing job at it. Um, yeah, I think that is definitely what's most unique about us is like we offer the learning opportunities as well as the hands-on experience. I think like what another part of like that is that because of the farm, like we have literal food for people, um, which we give out at our harvest handouts and um, like we'll do that, I guess, until we run out of food. But then we also like try to give food to people at our like dinners, which we try to do once a month called get in the dirt dinners. So I think like literal food that we have to give to you is a part of it. Awesome. And how could someone um, like how did you all get involved or how could an interested student get involved with FH King? Yeah, there's kind of a lot of different ways to get involved, I think. Uh, given the current pandemic situation, we do a couple of on we have some online programming on our website and interacting with our social media. But in general, we do little workshops that you can attend or get the dirt dinners. And then if you become more interested, you can join one of our three committees, which are education and programming. So we work on like making events happen and what we want to focus the org on teaching other people and what kind of skills we can share and organizing that. Then there's the farm committee, which plans and would hopefully work on the farm. And then there's the urban agriculture committee, which focuses more on our uh, inside growing spaces, which is really cool. And we also have director positions opening up this uh, coming fall. So if you're interested, you're welcome to. Any student is welcome to apply. In like the current pandemic, it's 
kind of, we're still kind of trying to figure out how we can do like the most outreach. So I would say your best bet is to follow us on social media because we've been doing like a lot of pop up programming. We just did some programming with next gen on food insecurity. And so like if you just stay tuned to our social media, you can see if there are things you can attend until things are more set in stone. I also think um, kind of going back to something that's unique about our org is we really cover all facets of this is of like food. Um, a lot of the time when you're thinking food production, you're thinking, oh, the people who are like have their hands in the dirt growing, which is super, super important. But that's not everything that goes into that. Um, like, for example, I'm the administrative director. Um, I deal with a lot of the like business side and kind of um, the bureaucracy because we are um, under ASM. And then we also have a finance director because money is involved in everything. And so there's really something for everyone who wants to be involved in sustainable agriculture, but not may not think they have the necessary um, skills to be involved. Like there you are, you have the skills there. We need all skills. <laughs> Yeah, awesome. Um, so you mentioned ASM is um, that's the Associated, Associated Students of Madison. Um, what is your relationship like with them? I guess um, what are like some more um, benefits of being with them? And, and then you mentioned kind of the uh, um, more bureaucracy stuff. Um, do you just want to talk a little bit about that? Yeah, so I think um, we are super, super grateful because we are a GSSF, meaning that we do get funding and that funding is kind of um, going, it's through ASM, through seg fees, segregated fees. So um, we are super, super grateful for our relationship with ASM. However, being um, an agricultural org, it we definitely have run into issues because our timeline just isn't the same as other groups on campus. Um, we have to go by growing season, not necessarily semester. And so trying to overlap when we need to be growing things and when semester or summer is starting, um, I think that has been an issue, but luckily it's one we've been able to navigate so far. So that must be like a nice opportunity for like people who are staying in Madison for the summer, um, getting more, I guess, experience working in the garden there. Um, is that a, a committee you said you could join or is that like anyone in FH King can help out with? So um, I can speak to that a little bit because typically as the education director, I would run um, an internship in the summer. So for people who are staying in Madison, they could be a part of an internship where I would host classes and then also invite guest speakers, which may be um, professors or other people in the community. We go on like field trips into the community um and then also we spend time working on the farm helping out the farm directors and like summer is the best time to be on the farm because most bountiful harvests um and then they would also help run harvest handouts because of covid that's not happening right now but hopefully maybe next summer we could have one so people should definitely stay tuned for that if they are interested in getting hands-on experience in the farm especially in the summer and then there is that farm committee during the school year, which we're not sure how those committees will be running, but in a typical scenario, you could get hands-on experience in the farm through that. Yeah, we also um, welcome any volunteers that yeah. would wanna come out without like the commitment of an internship. And then we also run a full cycle freight program that we typically accept volunteers for, which is a bike compost program where we have partnerships with a bunch of local businesses and we um, go pick up their compost on bikes and then bring it back to our farm. <laughs> oh, that's cool. I didn't know that was um, that was an opportunity. Um, so yeah, t talking more about the farm and the, um, I guess the food you grow there, what are some sustainable foods um, that people should be kind of investing more of their time in? Um, yeah, what are your thoughts on that? Okay, so sustainable food is hard because the biggest issue with the food system is that we have like not a lot of control over it. And there's a lot of systems built on inequality on ex and exploitation that you should go and read about. Um, 
that prevent consumers from having a choice. So if you do have a choice, and um, one way that you can have a choice is by coming and getting um, free produce from FH King, or if you're able to go to the farmer's market, your best bet is to like interact with farmers one-on-one -on -one or through something that people have a lot of control over, like in a co-op. Um, and then you can choose the foods that you find to be most sustainable based on having a conversation with your farmer or doing research yourself. Like that may mean you only are purchasing organic food, or it may mean you're having a conversation with the farmer at farmer's markets. I, I do that all the time. It's like normal about what their practices are, like um, if they're cage free chickens or stuff like that. Um, because otherwise I think it's important, don't beat yourself up. Food is, is inaccessible and expensive and it's not your fault. So that's kind of like what FH King is working on. So yeah, it's difficult. Yeah. I think it definitely highlights the, you know, the food insecurity issues we have and the importance, like Tyler was saying earlier, of like, we do have finances and things like that. So like, we do need like a spectrum of majors and students and areas, I guess, um, in the, in general society to be working on the issue. So that's an interesting aspect. Um, Maggie or Tyler, do you have anything else to add on that? Um, yeah, no, I think that what Sophia said is fantastic. Um, yeah, I also think that we have to remember that we are human and we can't be perfect and we have to navigate this like really crazy messed up food system that most of us don't understand. So it's really important to not beat ourselves up yes. and if you want that avocado, you know, eat that avocado. Like, you know, we have to we have to kind of navigate with what we are dealt, and then in doing so, those who have the privilege um, begin fighting that. So, one like really good place to start because it, it is like like this is kind of what Tyler and I I would say study a lot in CNE social classes if you're interested in it. But also like the FH King website has like book and movie reviews on some like really great resources for this. There are whole like experts in the fields and they're actually really easy to read books, so. Okay, yeah, we'll make sure to link your website too um, when we post the webcast. I know I'm, I'm kind of interested. I want to check that out a little bit more. Um, cool, another question we got from a follower who I think was checking out your social media and website was, what are microgreens? Um, so could you explain that to us? Well, I can take a stab at it. <laughs> I think the name is, it's weirdly self-explanatory. They're just microgreens. So they're, you start growing like sunflowers or what are some other ones that are pretty common? Alfalfa, right. sprouts. Like Rapture. and then you harvest them really early so they're these little baby sprouts and then you can eat them or put them in smoothies or do whatever you want with them but the name is surprisingly accurate yeah and what's really great about them is they can be grown in relatively small spaces and you grow a lot of it um, because most greens you can cut and then they'll regrow a few times and then everything that goes into it can just be composted so they are pretty fantastic and don't let um media tell you that there's some like high class bougie thing because anyone can grow them <laughs> yes so we have we had like a whole video uh, with a huge microgreen farmer and he's like people try to tell you that this is fancy it's not fancy you should do it <laughs> so this is something like i could do in my college apartment yeah okay that sounds pretty cool um so we t we've been mentioning your handouts a lot throughout the conversation. Do we want to talk a little bit more about um, when the where those handouts happen? Um, like what like everything you need to know, I guess, to go to a handout. Yeah, absolutely. So currently, well, first of all, what are harvest handouts? Um, pretty self-explanatory. Again, we harvest everything in the morning transport it back to campus and then set up like a free farm stand for anyone to come take whatever they want. Currently we are set up outside Union South from noon until either about 1.30 or when everything is gone. That in the last few weeks that has been a little earlier than 1.30 because we have had so many people coming which has been fantastic. Um, 
when the school when the semester starts that might change but if you follow us on facebook or instagram you will keep we will keep you up to date on where we will be and when yeah wear a what mask are, <laughs> yeah awesome. wear a mask. what are like some recent stuff that's been at the harvest handouts we just had japanese eggplant which were super cool looking and exciting <laughs> Um, we have a lot yeah. of purple produce. That's like my favorite part. I'm always like harvesting. I'm never at the handouts and I just like like to count how many different purple vegetables we have. <laughs> but we like always we have so many peppers. Tomatoes are about to come. We have a bunch of different squash now. Always kale. Always kale. <laughs> but a yeah. ton of stuff and every week it's like over 100 pounds now, right? Wow, that's awesome. All right. Well, thank you so much for joining me on this webcast. I know I learned a lot about what FH King does and I'm excited to look at your resources. Um, uh, so yeah, thank you, again, thank you again for joining me and these Ask Bucky Unfiltered webcasts are posted every Sunday.